In today's video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can tower over a building or make yourself bigger than a building such that you can literally be looking down on the building. Hi guys. Wait. You see what I just did to that building? See how I dropped it? Let me show you how to do it in three steps. Number one, it's about to rain, guys. I'll see you later. Did you understand the magic in that video? Did you notice that after I jumped over the building and ran back, this time around I was small, smaller than the building. To be very honest, this video was inspired by Brandon. Brandon is uh, a famous YouTuber, a filmmaker, and he does a lot of VFX content. And I saw this video, got inspired by it, and I thought to make my own fashion. What do you think of my fashion? Okay. Making this video is meant to be a very short and simple process. So the first thing you want to do is get a building, a building you want to use for this sort of effect. Mind you, it has to be some sort of distance between yourself and the building such that the roof of the building has to be in shot in, the, in view, right? So there has to be some distance. And part of how you sort of create much of a distance is by using a wide angle lens. Because if you use a wide angle lens, it pushes the building far behind. So you need to bear that in mind whilst you're making this video. The next thing is you have to put your camera at a low angle. So it's meant to be a very low angle shot. The low angle shot that projects you as a giant it makes you big and the building behind quite small. The technique behind this sort of idea is the building is far behind, so it's a bit small. You are closer to the camera and towering over the camera, so it sort of makes you big, right? Another importance of using the wide angle lens is to make sure that both the background and yourself are in focus. It's very critical. Everything has to be sharp in focus. The building behind it has to be in focus. Yourself standing in front has to be in focus. Whilst you're shooting, at the point you want to jump over the building, make sure that your leg goes above the building. Anything at all you want to jump, make sure lift well enough that your leg goes above it, else it's going to mess your effect up. That's why that distance is very important. If the building is at your probably your waistline or maybe somewhere just above your waist, it's gonna it's it's not gonna take a lot for you to jump higher than the building because it's far behind you. So it's so important that you bear that in mind. Jump high above the building. The next thing is do your performance and basically that is it. One important point that I almost forgot is that you've got to take a clean sheet of that shot. Either you do a snapshot of the building, just the frame you're shooting, or you do a clean recording. So a clean sheet is just a clean recording without you or anybody in the shot. Guys, give this video a like if you're liking it, a thumbs up, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Like I told you guys, I'm actually heading to 1,000. I know I'm still pretty low, but yes, you just have to be consistent and keep building the community, we'll get there eventually. So now it's time for some editing, let's go into Premiere Pro. In Premiere Pro, all you need to do is drag your footage on the timeline and then drag in your clean sheet or your still shot of the same frame on the timeline above your main footage. Then on that clean sheet, you have to mask around the building. The masking can be time consuming, but it's important you go through it because it's going to help you. So once you're done masking, voila, what happens is it now keeps you behind the building. The building actually showing is the still image that you have maxed out. The next thing is, as soon as you jump, once your legs are on the air above the building, you cut the still shot or the clean sheet that you had maxed earlier. And then the next point you're jumping is actually the real shot. And this is what it would look like. The most important thing is that when you're shooting, the frame you shot the video with is actually what you do your still shots or your clean sheet with. Let the frame not shake. Once it shakes, somehow messes up 
things. So that's actually the secret of this effect. So that's the end of our episode for today on Creative Warehouse. I hope you learned this and you're going to put them in practice. Thank you very much for sticking with us. Thank you for being part of this community. See you guys next week with another VFX or video magic, if you may. Like you all know, we are creative. Stay creative, guys, and see you next time.